you're going to get. Praise the name of the Lord. It's my greatest pleasure to bring to our microphone this morning the regional coordinator for the whole of Europe mainland, no less a personality as my pastor, my beloved pastor, my Oga, Pastor Dele Olowu. Church, rise up and give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Je- You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We appreciate it. There is someone here in the place of prayer the Lord told me clearly that beginning from this day you will have total victory. Say to yourself this is my month of total victory. In the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Pastor, Pastor Austin Ukaiwe. I actually came to say thank you. I told him I was coming to say thank you. Because many of you may not know that Europe is the biggest mission field today in the whole wide world. The Europeans brought us the gospel, but today, somehow, the enemy turned their backs on their God, the one who has done good to them. But we bless God that we have a few people all over the world, especially in Nigeria, who go spend time, energy, and spare no resource to support the planting of churches in Europe mainland. And your pastor, Pastor Austin Okaiwe, has been one of such people. I want you to please uh, stand up and clap for this great man of God, if you don't mind. I'm sorry. Please clap for him because you may not know what his life has done to many, many of us in Europe. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Because of the kind of sacrifice that you make through him, several churches have been planted in Europe today in Jesus' name. Most pastors plant one church. But he came to us and said, I'm going to plant three churches in three countries. And not only did that, he has gone even to the fourth country. And we are still counting. The God of heaven whom we are serving as a church, he himself will bring you great reward in Jesus' name. And as I prepared for this, and I prayed because he said, I will bless the church. I said, well, God, what am I going to say? And God said, tell them. I'm going to make their life a wonder. And you know, before your life can become a wonder, power must change hands. Because whoever has been oppressing you, that oppression, oppressor must be overthrown. Then you can manifest in glory. And that is why in this season, I believe, God of heaven will cause you to move forward and your life will become a wonder in Jesus' name. So because of time, and uh, today is Thanksgiving service in some of our churches, including our own in, in, in Holland, we don't preach. We just share testimonies. We just, you know, a dance and praise God. And I'm glad that some of our pastors who migrated back are here. Hallelujah. You have blessed my pastor in Jesus' name. Anyway, the important point is that in this season, tell yourself, in this season, my life is becoming a wonder. In Jesus' name. David said in the book of Psalm 71, verse 7. Psalm 71, verse 7. He says, My life is a wonder to many because the Lord is my strong refuge. Say, The Lord is my strong refuge. I really bless God for the choir because the way they sang and in fact all the ministrations and all the testimonies they were just pointing to a confirmation of what God has said to me in the place of prayer that surely in this season your life will become a wonder in Jesus name and for your life to become a wonder 
power must change hands. And we thank God that power has changed hands in Jesus' name. And brothers and sisters, what matters in life is not where you started. It's not where you are now. It is where you will end up. And my prayer, my belief is that beginning from this month, you will end well in Jesus' name. Your destiny will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Open your Bibles with me to the text passage, which is Mark chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. Mark chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. I want to share with you five critical points that will help to ensure that your life becomes a wonder to many. As I stand up here, our brethren all over Europe, we have 46 countries in Europe now, they send their greetings and they said, as you say, thank you. God of heaven himself, we thank you this month in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 5 verse 17, and they began to pray him, this was Jesus, to depart out of their coasts. The Lord has done a great miracle. There was a man who was always in the tomb. The Bible says no one could heal him. In fact, according to our general overseer, he said, when other mad people see this man, they run. Because his own madness was a special kind of madness. However, after he had done this great miracle of delivering the man from the hand of the enemy, the people of the city said, sorry sir, we don't want you. You are spoiling our economy. You should go. They sent Jesus out of their city. But then the man came and said, Jesus, if these people will not allow you to stay here, in verse 18, I would like to go with you. And when he was coming to the ship, the man that had been possessed with the devil came to Jesus to say what? Thank you. What did he come to say? So he prayed Jesus. He said, Jesus, since they didn't allow you to stay in my city, I ask only one thing from you. And that is, allow me to go with you. I want to be with you all the time. The next verse, verse 19, the Lord Jesus Christ says to him, No, you are not going to stay with me. You are going to go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had had compassion on thee. Verse 20, the Bible says, the man goes home and begins to tell his friends, publishing in ten cities. How many cities? Decapolis means ten cities. How great things Jesus had done for him. And how many people marveled? I can't hear you. All men marveled. I've asked myself many times if all men can marvel at a person who was a former mad man. Everybody knew him to be specially mad. 6,000 legion of demons were inside of him. Then surely, the God who could do that is the same God we are serving and is able to do it in your life in Jesus' name. So I just want to share with you five important principles that will ensure that whether the devil likes it or not, your life Tell the fellow next to you, your life must become a wonder. Because the God that you serve is your strong refuge. Hallelujah. The first principle is the principle of thanksgiving. You must learn to do what? Give thanks. I love to tell a story. It's a story of a couple. They were married. They celebrated 20 years of marriage. And they invited everybody. Big party they threw. But then on the second morning of their celebration, the wife filed for divorce. And they say, ah, what's happening? Yesterday, we were celebrating. Today, you filed for divorce. He said, yes. I filed for divorce, and I'm not telling anybody why I'm filing for divorce. It's just that I'm tired of this relationship. Anyway, the pastor, thank God for pastors like Pastor Austin, said, okay, confide in me and let us know what the problem is. So the woman confided in the pastor. He said, 20 years I've married this man. 
He has never said one word to me, which is, thank you. I have done everything. I spent my life serving this man. I've done everything. We have had children. I've raised these children. I've done the best I could. There's one word I never heard from this man. And it is the word, thank you. Anyway, by the time they finished, they discovered he has also not said two other words. The word, please. He orders the wife around. You take this. You do that. And also, never said, I am sorry. Three powerful words, which many of us never say. It's not part of our vocabulary. But when you begin to give thanks, you will find that doors will open for you. You will find that help will come your way. Because by Jesus Christ, God himself said, give thanks in how many things? I can't hear you. All things you should give thanks. That story is a story about you and I. Many of us, we have never said thank you to God. We spend a lot of time talking to him what he has not done. And we do not learn to give him thanks. This happened to me recently. I came in August of last year to Nigeria. And had a wonderful time. I waited on God for three days towards the end of the, of the, of the program. But as I was leaving, I discovered and I ended my fast. I could not, you know, urinate. I could not go to the toilet. I could not... First day, second day, third day. Oh. I went to the doctor. Doctor said, excuse me, sir. I've looked at you. I think you need a surgery, sir. And uh, since we can't do it here, it's better you run back. So, um, I thought he was joking. I started praying the more. And uh, the thing did not get better. To call a long story short, I was, you know driven into the airport and carried on a stretcher. That was the first time in my life I've been carried on a stretcher. In the mid-air, there was almost a crisis. They had to call for doctors to come and, you know, look at me and look at it again. When I got to Holland, the doctor said, yes, you need a surgery and you need it right now. If it is one more week, it will be too late. Cut a long story short, I started wondering, how can this happen? In fact, my assistant, who is a white man, he said, when people are, are sick, we ask them to go to Nigeria, and they come back healed, a whole. But you, you went to Nigeria, you were whole, you are, well, you are not sick, then you come back sick. What's wrong with you, sir? I said, I don't know, I need to know. I shut my door, I started praise, you know, worshipping God. And God said, I want you to worship me for one full day. I've never done it before. Try it. So I started to worship God for one full day. And in that day, God said, I just wanted your fellowship. I want to hear you say thank you to me. He said, you have never thanked me for your internal organs. I, I went, I got a, a big, you know, fat book, medical book. He said, look at how your brain works. Look at how your intestine works. Look at how the systems, how they work. And each one is a mystery. Do you know your kidney, your small kidney? When one of our pastors, you know, had a problem and they had to change the kidney, put a new kidney inside the wife, they took us to the hospital and the Holy Spirit reminded me, can you remember that your pastor at that time? The pastor said, because the machine that was functioning to just replace the while they were changing the, the kidney was as big as bigger than this altar. And the doctor said, do you know what? The work that the kidney is doing is what the work that this huge machine that is here is doing. So I started to praise God and worship God and then God opened my eyes. He said, look at Matthew chapter 21 verse 21. I want you to look at it yourself. Matthew 21 verse 21. He says, if you shall say to this mountain, mountain, pack your load and go. It will go. This day, every mountain in your life, they are going in Jesus' name. But you must have learned how to worship God. God only respects others from those who have spent time in His presence. Revelation is what brings revolution, I tell people. So thanksgiving is something that God says we should go do. And I pray from now on, you will never fail to say thank you in Jesus' name.
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, God gives some two, three difficult commandments. He says, rejoice always, pray always, and give thanks in all circumstances. Three commandments. And the only one that helps you to do the three is if you learn to give thanks. A general overseer shared with us, he said, the best kind of prayer is worship. The best kind of prayer is thanksgiving. And I've watched him as I've worked with him. I've discovered that if he's going to pray for one hour, 50 minutes will be used just to worship and thank God. You try it and see how it will transform your life. You find that to give thanks to God for your home, for your family, the things that we take for granted, your internal organs, your external organs. You know, David said, you know, in the Psalm 103, verse 1, Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his who is he speaking to? No. He's speaking to himself. He says, My soul, bless the Lord. All that is within me, bless his holy name. You need to have that conversation with yourself. You need to tell yourself, It is time. This season is a season to thank God. Bless him for the things we have taken for granted. How many of you have flown in the air this year? You have been in the air. You've, 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 you've been in an aircraft. Anybody? You've been in an aircraft. I don't want your pastor to put it up. You can put down your hand. I know you have been everywhere. But brethren, do you know that some people took off March 8th? They took off from a plane and up till now, in spite of all the technology that we have in this whole wide world, no one knows where they are. They've searched them in the sea. They've searched them on the land, in the air. No one knows where they are. But many of us, we take off and we come back. Many of us, our children go to school and they come back. You, are, you have been hearing about 300 girls. All they did was go to school. And today, nobody knows where they are. Not even the governments of the whole world knows where they are. But God keeps us and we never learn to say, thank you. Say to the person next to you, my brother, thank you for being a child of God. Learn to say thank you. I say this also because in Europe, the reason why Europe is where it is today, in the confusion that we are in, we are going through very difficult problems today in Europe, as I'm sure you know. It has to do with the fact that Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 21, Romans chapter 1 verse 21, when people know who God is, and they fail to give glory, acknowledge him as God. What does God do? He gives them up to do the things that are not convenient. That's exactly what is happening. So they are pushing. The governments of Europe are push, pushing homosexuality. The governments of Europe will accept anything from you. You can say anything. The only thing they don't want to hear is the name of Jesus. And whether the devil likes it or not, Jesus will reign in Europe in Jesus' name. Jesus will reign everywhere in Jesus' name. The final reason why you must give thanks to God is the fact that every time you give thanks to God, God gives you much more than the original blessing. Try it. you find examples in the Bible. This man that we read about, he went to give thanks to God. Your pastor talked about Anna. Hannah went to give thanks to God. And God said, uh -huh, you are the woman. Because many of us, when we make a vow, we never fulfill it. She made a vow and she fulfilled it. And God said, good. I'm going to give you three more girls and two more boys. And God of heaven will surprise you in this season in Jesus' name. There are several examples in the Bible, but because of time, I go. But there's a case of the, the ten lepers. One leper that came back. What did the Lord Jesus Christ tell him? The Lord Jesus Christ said, Go and be whole. All the others got healing, but he got wholeness. In this season, you will get wholeness in Jesus' name. Number two principle that will make you to become a wonder is to learn to obey God. 
even when what God says does not make sense to you. Learn to obey God, full, complete, perfect obedience, even when what God says does not make sense. Because many people say, what God is saying does not make sense. To this man, it did not make sense. The man said, I want to be with you. I want to go with you. He, he, he thought Jesus Christ would even appreciate it. But Jesus said, no, 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 you go back home. And the man went back home. My prayer is that your, the Lord will help you to begin to obey God fully in Jesus' name. In uh, my country, where I live, I've lived for the last almost 15 years now, they call this Bible Het Book. Het Book means it's the book. You know, I, re- I used to be in academia, and there are so many books you read. But they say Het Book means the book. If you have read every other book, you have not read this book and obeyed it, you have read nothing. Because in this book, you will find clear commandments for life. And my prayer is that God will help us to learn to do what he says to us in Jesus' name. I say this because also, what God says to us does not make sense. But you just do it. And then you'll find that it makes sense at the end of the day. Number three principle, because of time. The Lord told him to go to his friends. The man did not have friends. According to verse 2 of the passage we read, he was living in the tomb. He did not have friends. So the third principle, which I want to share with you, which works for me, I will work for you too in Jesus' name, is that you must learn to make friends. Learn to do what? I can't hear you. Make friends. Tell the fellow next to please make friends. Are, <laughs> David said, I am for peace, but when I speak, it is for war. Many of us will like to make friends, but every time we open our mouths, we create enemies for ourselves. In this season, God will teach you how to make friends in Jesus' name. Why are friends important? Friends are important because according to scriptures, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, it says, A friend loveth at all times. How many times? That we're not talking about fake friends. We're talking about real friends. A friend loveth how many times? When I was going to get married, I told my wife, I said, Thank God we were friends because we were friends long before we became husband and wife. I said, but please, don't ever forget that we are friends. Whatever I do, don't worry. We are what? Friends. So when there are some katakata going on, I say, don't forget we are friends. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then in the book of Proverbs 18.24, 18.24 says, He that wants to have friends must learn how to make other people feel friendly to him. Proverbs 18.24. So you must not only learn how to make friends, you must not learn how to keep your good friends. Why do I say this? Because the Lord Jesus Christ told the man, go to your friends. Go and make friends. Praise the name of the Lord somebody. Make friends. The friends, the true friends will open doors for you. We make you to get to where you, you how am I, why am I here today? Because I have I'm friendship with the pastor. Yes or no? If we are enemies, if I say I'm in town, we say, oh, sorry. We, thank God. When are you going back? Bye-bye. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Make friends. Tell the fellow that make friends. This is important because the Lord Jesus Christ spent the time he was here on earth making friends. How is it that we are here today worshipping him? Is it not because he made friends with us? He loved the one that was not lovable. Many of us will say, my wife has done this. Therefore, I am going to do this. I am going to do that. Ah. If God was going to treat you the same way, will you be a child of God today? I don't know about you, but if God was to look at my sins and wickedness, I would never be a child of God. I would never be a pastor. Never. But God says he loved us even when we are unlovable. May God help you to learn to make friends in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus Christ actually instructed his disciples to go and make friends. Because when he was on earth, he was making friends. You remember the story in John chapter 4? John chapter 4, where that woman who had had seven husbands came to draw water. The Lord Jesus Christ asked, can I get some water from, him, from her? Yes or no? You read the story. Did Jesus Christ 
take the water. He never took the water. He did not need the water. He was just using water to make friends. Learn how to make friends. Peter, how about Peter? Peter he had met in John chapter 1. But then Peter said, well, I am a businessman. I go back to my business. And the Lord Jesus Christ followed him and went to his place of, of, of work. And he said, Peter, you need a lot of fish? And Peter said, yes, plenty of it. And then Peter got a lot of fish. Yes or no? I'm sure Pastor Austin must have preached a lot of sermons unto you. But you live at verse 11. Did Peter go home with any of the fish? Why? Because the one who came for him, came for him, did not come for fish. In this season, God will help you to learn to make friends in Jesus' name. The Lord told his disciples in the book of uh, Luke chapter 10. You can study when you get home. Luke chapter 10, verses 9 to 14. If you want this church to multiply, because that's what I would like to see. This church is going to multiply in this season in Jesus' name. Oh, th- only a few people said amen because you are too big already. They are wondering how will God do it? We are already full. There is no other space. God will give you another space in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord told his disciples, when you get to a person's home, what should you say when you get there? Peace unto this house. He says, when they put food before you, what should you do? You sit down and eat the food. If somebody is sick, you heal the person who will sit there. It is only when you have done all of this that you should then tell them about the kingdom. But if we want to do it, why should we do it? We go there and say, are you saved? Do you have Christ in your life? Do you know you are going to help fire? No, he didn't tell us to do that. It's to make friends. May you learn to make friends in this season in Jesus' name. Number four principle, because of time, is that you must learn to understand there is power in your testimony. I was so happy. There's power in your testimony. I was so glad to hear the testimonies. These, are, these testimonies of today, I hope I will get a, a DVD so that I can take, take this with me. These are extraordinary things. Somebody, you know, a huge uh, jar of water, you know, gallons of water, fall on a person. And the person is still alive to give that testimony. Ah, yeah, Let's clap for Jesus one more time. Let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, Your testimony has power. Tell the fellow next to you, your testimony has power. Number one, what does a witness do? Jesus said, you will receive power. We have been talking about change of power. Now, if you have power and you don't witness, what is the use of that? You say you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come, and then you shall be my witnesses. It is the testimony that is your witness. Those of us who are living in Europe, we appreciate this now because people in Europe know a lot of philosophy. There is no philosophy we are going to talk about that they will not say this. They will tell you there is nothing there. You know, how can a virgin give birth to a baby? To a baby? It's not possible. It's, there is no science behind it. But if you can say, well, you may know, but I don't have womb. And I have, I've seen people who don't have womb. And I have a child. So if God can do it for me now, it means he can do it in that time. Yes or no? Number two, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. It says they overcame Satan. Not, not demons. Say in this season you are going to overcome Satan in Jesus' name. They overcame Satan. How? By the blood of the Lamb and the power of their testimony. How do you overcome Satan? By the power of your testimony. By telling others about your testimony, other people have faith to believe God and to kick against the enemy. In this season, God will surprise you in Jesus' name. Finally, because of time, you must learn to publish your testimony. Publish your testimony. Publish your testimony. The man, the Bible says, he began to publish. What does it mean to publish? Publish means you disseminate to a large number of people. You see, many of us, we like to share our testimony in the church. And that is good. It encourages us. But actually, where God wants you to share this testimony is outside the church. Where? I can't hear you. Outside the church. Because the people who do not believe Jesus, the people who say Jesus is not able to do anything, they are outside. They need to hear it. Much more importantly is that in the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 10, 
Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. It says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is what? I can't hear you. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. So if you want to be prophetic, what will happen in other people's lives? Learn to share your testimony. If you study the life of this man, he was able to invite Jesus Christ back. In the book of chapter Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 to 35, he was able to bring Jesus back to the Decapolis so that he can continue his ministration. Mark chapter 7, verses 31 to 35. You find it all there. Because of his, the way he was publishing his testimonies, he was able to bring other people to, him, to Jesus. In this season, God of heaven will surprise you in Jesus' name. I end with the story of a man that I read. And I would like to, you to, I don't like to challenge you to read the same person's story. The story is of a man who does not have arms at all. The title of the book is What is Your Excuse? I don't know, I'm sure your pastor has it. What is your excuse? It's a person who does not have arms at all. But today, he drives a car, he prepares food, he has a family, he writes books, he op- you know, in fact, at the back of the book, he uses his leg to take a cup of water into his mouth. So, the important point here is the fact that when you publish your testimony, it brings great encouragement to others to believe that the God that we serve is able to make all things beautiful. And that God who has done it in his life, he will do it in your life in Jesus' name. I end where I started, which is God said, there is going to be total victory for you. I want you to stand on your feet and begin to say, Father, I thank you.